We're going to do a short unit on radicals to end the, to end the semester. Um, the first thing we need to talk about is how do we simplify radicals. So we know how to simplify fractions, so I'm going to compare it to that a little bit. We know that in order for fractions to be in simplest form, both the top and the bottom can't be divided by the same thing. For example, if I had 3 over 6 as my fraction, we would hopefully all know that that's not in simplest form because both top and bottom can be divided by 3, giving me 1 half. Well, with radicals, the rule is that you cannot have a perfect square under your radical. So, for example, if I have the square root of 49, I would say that's not in simplest form because that's just 7. Well, we extend it to say if we have multiples of perfect squares underneath the radicals, that's not in perfect form either. Let me please remind you of all the perfect squares that you know. So this list is here. Remember, you did have to memorize that at some point. Obviously, there are more. So we went through 15 squared. Of course, there's 16 squared, 17 squared, so on and so on that you can always use a calculator to assist you in finding. We have this very, very important property with radicals that says if we have two things being multiplied under a radical, we can break those two things up and give them each their own radical. Oftentimes, we have to create the multiplication on our own. For example, if I had the square root of 8, I would need to recognize that that's the same thing as saying 4 times 2, which would mean the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Why is that important? Well, remember, I just told you with simplest form, you can't have a perfect square under the radical. When I rewrote 8 as 4 times 2, I then noticed that I had a perfect square under a radical. 8 has a multiple of 4, or 8 is a multiple of 4. So by rewriting it in this way, now I'm going to use some of the information that I know. Well, I know that 4 is a perfect square. The square root of 4, therefore, is just 2. So in simplest form, the square root of 8 is 2 times the square root of 2. So notice that I'm using this property, or I'm going to be using this property, to check to see if I have the number, if I have any perfect squares under my radical, to see if the number under my radical, my given number, is a multiple of a perfect square. We are going to look at some more examples. Notice that it is very, very important that we're able to recognize what our perfect squares are. If you never passed your perfect squares quiz, please make sure you're studying these. Because um, again, they are going to become very important here. So, looking at some examples. So my first example I have is I'm asked to simplify the square root of 12. Well, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask myself is can I rewrite 12 in some way that it's multiplying with a perfect square? I know that 12 is, for example, 2 times 6. But since neither 2 nor 6 are perfect squares, I don't care. I know that 12 is 4 times 3. Well, that helps me because 4 is a perfect square. So notice I'm asking myself if the number under the radical has any perfect squares. So 12, I'm going to say, is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 3. That helps me because now I can break, according to that above property, each of those into their own radical. Then taking it one step further, I know that the square root of 4 is 2. And I don't know the square root of 3 because 3 is not a perfect square, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it under its radical. That would be the simplest form for the square root of 12. Looking at the square root of 75, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to ask myself, can 75 be divided by any perfect squares? Well, I look at my perfect squares list. It cannot be divided by 4. It can't be divided by 9. It can't be divided by 16. It can, however, be divided by 25. In fact, 75 is the same thing as 25 times 3, which, according to my above property, is the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. Taking it again, that extra step, I know the square root of 25 is just 5. I do not know the square root of 3, so I leave it under the radical. And I have 5 times the square root of 3 as my simplest form. Now would be a good time for you to pause the video and try letter C. Notice I have it written twice because I am going to show you two separate ways to do it. So if you want to pause it and try letter C on your own. 
Okay, now that you've had a chance to try one, as I said before, I'm going to do letter C in two separate ways because there are two ways to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, what if I said, I know 48 can be divided by 4, and 4 is the perfect square. I know that 48 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 12, which is the square root of 4 times the square root of 12. The square root of 4, of course, is 2. I do not know the square root of 12. However, notice up here, when I had the square root of 3, 3 can't be divided by any other perfect squares. 12, on the other hand, still has a perfect square in it. It has the perfect square of, six, uh, excuse me, of 4 in it still. So I need to go further. So I'm going to basically go through my same steps again. The 2 is going to drop down. 12, I'm going to say, is 4 times 3, because again, 4 is a perfect square which gives me 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. This, so notice that because these two are written right next to each other, it means they're being multiplied. So when I change the square root of 4 to 2, I'm going to have multiplication between those two 2's. So I'm going to have 2 times 2 times the square root of 3. I know 2 times 2 is 4. I have no idea what the square root of 3 is, and it cannot be divided by any other perfect squares. So that will be my final answer. It is okay to do it that way. Notice I'm getting to a final answer. The faster way to do this would to recognize that 48 can be divided by 4, but it can also be divided by a larger perfect square. 16 times 3 is 48. Now, because most of us aren't familiar with our multiples of 16, we probably are going to do 4, but it is faster if you can recognize that 48 is divisible by 16, giving me the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. So since I know the square root of 16 is 4, I can then rewrite this as 4 times the square root of 3. I check 3. It doesn't have any other perfect squares in it, so I'm going to go ahead and stop here. Notice I do get the same answer. It is faster if you can find the largest perfect square that goes into a number. But again, if you do not recognize or do not find the largest perfect square, that's all right because you are going to get the same result. You just are going to have to take out more than one perfect square. So you're going to go through the process more than once. But simplifying perfect squares, we always take out perfect squares. Notice I'm not writing this at any time as 8 times 6. 6 and 8 are not perfect squares. I only break my number into a factor of a perfect square.